Oh, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we are working on adding naive hardware acceleration um, to my fake graphics card. So, uh, for context, we have been playing with this idea of uh, one day it would be cool if we could write, if we could like make a GPU, right? So like go onto an FPGA, put all of the like hardware together so that you can like render a bunch of stuff in parallel, do some 3D acceleration, right? Um, but before we get there, um, we need to understand what a GPU actually does, which is not something that I feel like I have a good handle on at this point in time, right? Um, and so I think the plan here is, is to try to implement a fake graphics card within a virtual machine um, in the attempt to understand where the split between hardware and software lies, right? Because there's a lot of stuff that a GPU does and it's not clear to me, like the GPU stack is like, I want to draw this model, right? Here are like a thousand vertices and make them into triangles and put colors on them and stuff, right? And here's a program for how we will put those colors onto the triangles. And it's like, who who is responsible for what there? Obviously there's like a compiler somewhere, right? That takes that shader code and turns it into something. Then like, surely something has to make it onto the GPU, but what, what makes it on the GPU? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know where like the boundary between software and hardware lies. So what we are slowly working towards is um, a graphics card that we've implemented. So we'll have like, uh, you know, V virtual machine QEMU. We have like GPU in here. We have like Linux kernel, kernel. And he has like a little driver, right? And he talks to the GPU. That's kind of like what we're working on. And then there's like user space who has like Mesa who will presumably talk to this guy. And so we're trying to figure out like, we've kind of got like a little bit of this, this piece, right? We have like a kernel driver and a fake GPU that doesn't really do a lot. Um, we can maybe show it right now, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's take a quick look. Uh, so if we go to like test app dev DRI card one, it should print out before all of this fucking log spam. Uh, sorry, let's do uh, two and one less, maybe, so that we can actually see the beginning of the put. He says somewhere, maybe he doesn't. Well, he's supposed to print out that he is using my GPU. Uh, and if we go here, we do see like a little picture drawn. So this is kind of where we are right now. We can do like draw pixels to screen on GPU. Um, and this is using like standard Linux APIs. So if we run the same program on a different GPU, it'll output the same thing. Right? So we're kind of conforming to the normal Linux APIs and we've been working towards um, 3D acceleration, right? So we have last stream added the ability to uh, upload a model to our GPU, which is implemented in like QEMU in software. And here is like QEMU printing out that he got our model, right? So we have like X, Y, Z location in 3D space followed by UV coordinates. Um, and he's kind of like spamming these up. So we should be in a spot now where if we can like simulate a graphics card in QEMU by using OpenGL, we can start like working towards a fixed pipeline of like vertex buffer, go to vertex shader, like a fixed vertex shader that like, I don't know, applies some model transform and then like colors it according to some texture, right? Uh, once we have that, then we can start integrating with like the Mesa user space stack and try to figure out like what goes on here. Uh, but before we do that, I kind of want to get like something rendering 3D with just with. So the goal here is raw dog some kernel calls to get some buffers into the GPU, render them in QEMU with OpenGL. That's right. And so uh, I think it's time to just jump in. So we should, we should just be able to take these sets of floating point data and do something with them. We should. Uh, so I think we want to be in our QEMU development environment. We have to have uh, different development environments for different parts of this project, unfortunately, because um, some parts of this project require this, like, uh, they have like an expectation on the file system layout uh, that does not is not true on NixOS, and I didn't haven't found a way to like get all the environments together yet. So you know, we'll we'll live, we'll live. Uh, so I guess we want to go into source QEMU, and we kind of want to look at wherever the heck we're printing all this stuff. Um, here. Okay, so here, in uh, at some point we get the data. So the way it works right now, the way it works right now is that like the PCI device, PCI, 
you can kind of like imagine him as like having a bunch of like individual registers that he exposes over like this all goes to like ram <laughs> i guess like a uh, memory memory right and so like these all get like individual addresses and we just like write to the addresses set them and what we've kind of done is we've kind of grouped these as like sometime we say like hey uh you can send us an an address of like something in physical memory for us to look at and here's its size and once once they finish telling us the size we then are go like okay we'll like copy that thing into our gpu buffers or whatever um and so once we've done that we should have something that we can like render presumably i just don't really know how yet um so i'm kind of imagining that we're going to take we, we've been like populating this buffer just with like void star data which is just like a bunch of floats and we kind of know how many floats there are in here and so we should be able to just kind of like create a vertex buffer and throw it somewhere as long as we can get an opengl context so let's figure out how other people get an opengl context so there's like vert gp vert io gpu is kind of like this like existing project that um basically forwards opengl calls from a guest in a virtual machine to the host um, so I don't really care about doing that specifically, but I do care about like how do they get access to a GL context. Um, and I think I saw in here before that they call like console. Let's see, console. Yeah, graphic console in it. Here they call it here, and I remember I remember seeing in here that they have a flag that says that they want OpenGL. Uh. So maybe we can prob we can probably like ask for this. We can probably ask for OpenGL. And if we have it, I'd be interested to see if we can just call like GL clear or something. Um because that like might just kind of be they might like set up the OpenGL context for us and we might just be like good to fucking go. That's like a very real possibility. Um so let's kind of go back to Sphero. Um, I guess we could maybe look for usage of this macro or this, uh, is this a macro? Yeah, this macro. And maybe other people kind of like switch behavior based off this. 196, 185, 150. Uh, yeah, so I don't really see anything interesting here. What about like, uh, we know when they like re-render the frame. I guess we don't know that. Uh, okay, so it doesn't look like they're doing anything crazy. Uh, we could also look for usage of this, which is not really used in that many other places either. So yeah, my bet is that we can just fucking ask for OpenGL and uh, see where it goes. So we'll call this a Sphero GPU, get flags, and we will just kind of return this. And I think that this is attached to graphics hardware ops. Yeah, so this is called, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, get flags. Okay, and do they do anything else in here? GFX update. So this is all kind of just nulled out. So nothing really that interesting there. Uh, yeah. Mm. They have a render block thing as well. But I don't think we need to worry about that. I don't need, think we need to worry about that. So I'm kind of curious if we were to just kind of say on like, kind of off rip here, uh, we kind of like initialize our console. Can we just call like uh? I guess if we were just call like GL clear here, that'd be kind of weird. Cause like we, we, somebody needs to like bind our texture that we're rendering to, right? Presumably we are rendering to some surface somewhere, and that's only true if the, we are we have like selected our output as like in the UI, right? Like, how do I explain this? So like here, we are only trying to render 
in this scenario where I click like Sphera on here, right? So like just calling GL clear doesn't seem really valid, right? That doesn't really seem reasonable to me. Um, so how is that managed? How is that managed? I mean, I guess we can just try calling like, I don't think this will do what I want. Uh, but you know, we can always try it. We can always try it. Let's just kind of see what happens. Uh, so I guess we need to build this thing. Uh, so it's a Ninja QEMU system X8664, I think. I think. And let's just kind of see what happens. Give him a sec. He's linking. He's got to think. It's a hard life. Okay. So, yeah, of course, nothing happened, right? So that doesn't make, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so when we actually draw stuff right now, we kind of call this like deep pie graphics thing. Um, and I guess maybe the display surface is probably the interesting piece here. So... You can only make it out of like RGB pixels though. Right? So you can you can create like a Pixman image, which is like a software 2, 2D rendering API, I think. Like that's what Pixman is. So that's kind of not what I'm expecting, to be honest. What about like where is this stuff to find? DPI graphics update. Huh. It does not make a lot of sense to me. Vert IO GPU GL. Can we look for maybe anywhere where they interact with, like, console, display? Oh, what's this? If display, open GL. Okay. Oh, I, that's not what I want. That's not helpful. Not helpful. This is kind of like a global variable that tells us if we have open GL enabled. Uh... Okay. What about like somewhere somewhere someone must request a like a buffer swap, right? So they have this like handle control, maybe process command. It's kind of where this sits. And if they have like set scan out, attach resource, submit 3D, maybe. They have like a render submit command here. Um, what, okay, so it looks like it goes into this, like, VirgiL library, is, like, how the other driver works. So it probably makes sense for us to start trying to look at that library and try to see, like, uh, do I have a shell to be in here? I do. Let's get into the right environment for this guy. Do I have OpenGL enabled? The commit, comment message mentioned display backend GL on? Maybe. I, I want to, I do want to confirm that in some way. I guess uh, we should have it enabled because the GTK, uh, if I go like, we have display GTK GL on. So I think we should have it on, uh, but we should confirm, uh, confirm eventually. But I, I do think that there's like something uh, how do I say this? I'm expecting something else. I'm expecting that we have to somewhere, like if, if I were to write this, I would I would call some callback in my driver when the window is active with my driver's thing, you know? Like GL draw raise should only happen in that case. Or maybe like every every frame they call stuff, but like by they all we only render some texture because we're not supposed to render to the screen if we're not the thing in the front, right? So maybe we look for like draw arrays in like in this library that's being called. So this is coming from like draw VBO. And can we just kind of like go up to the top here and try to figure out like, uh, you know, we can try to look for like something like this, although it seems like this is probably 
coming straight from this is probably coming straight from the guest in the virtual machine which is kind of surprising i think that's where we've seen this before we can look we can look at it for a second so this is going to be interesting right because this goes it gets into a call that ends up calling draw arrays which is maybe interesting uh which goes vrand decode submit command oh which isn't even top level so that goes through this like submit command call uh which is virgil render submit command right so basically any time we call this we could render something theoretically theoretically uh okay which kind of means that like anywhere this is called what's this for ctx zero hmm This looks like an interesting call. Uh, bum, bum. Hardware switch context. Context switch. Uh, make current. Yeah, so it looks like they have their own OpenGL context that they intentionally make current in that scenario. Create sub context. Ah, sub context. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder if anybody else. Maybe it's. I want to look out also at like other callers of this like display OpenGL thing. Right. We saw that. Uh, may, maybe another driver will give us a clue. Hi, right, new here. Envim setup looks great. Do you have a dot files group I can inspire by? Nope, but the, set, the setup's pretty straightforward. It's a uh, telescope, LSPs, uh, LI tree call tree or something like that for the call tree on the left. And I think that's like pretty much it. I think. Yeah, there's not there's not a lot going on. Not a lot going on. Telescope's the big one, like this thing. Um. Okay, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? It was vert IO GPU base, I think, had a call somewhere where they were looking for like uh, GL. Mm. I lost it. I lost it. It was when we were looking for uses of whoever set up the console. So we know where that is in our driver. It was in vert IO GPU base in their operations. We were looking for users of this thing. I think. I can't remember where we saw. Fuck. <laughs> That's annoying. Uh, somewhere we saw like some some f thing in a header that had like GL something. Globals here. Here, display open GL. This is what we're looking for. So it does look like this is kind of the only person who looks at that. I was kind of hoping to see something interesting in here. Um, damn. Uh, okay. Can we look for maybe usages of, like, OpenGL functions? Uh, okay. So what's going on here? In console GL, they have surface GL render texture. Render. Uh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Do 
GTK GL area draw. And these are for, this is for a virtual console. Oh, well, this is, uh, this is for like GTK specifically. Oopsies, fuck, wrong button. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, Geo. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's wrong, I feel like, where my cursor is fucking locked to the center of the screen. That's fucking annoying. Uh, I'm in the wrong folder. Okay. Sphero C. We were in graphic console in it. <laughs> oh, your completions look good. Envim comp doesn't do that for me. It's just, um... I'm using NVIM comp with, uh, I think, just language server callbacks, I think. So we were on the DPY functions. We saw in here somewhere they had, like, DPY GL stuff. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, this looks promising. This looks promising, right? We can make a OpenGL context and ask that to be the current context. So we maybe make a context for our QEMU console. Has anyone, does anyone else call this? Aha, here they do it, here they do it. So they cast this to a virtual, a VirGL render context. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we probably should call this stuff. Probably. Right, so if we create a GL context with our console, and uh, these params must be something. Q emu GL params. Uh, so who calls this again the other guys here do they have params q params so they set the major version and the minor version oh i see sure and that's all we're looking for uh so we can go like majors of three minor two or three or something can we go like crazy can we go like 4.6 can we just ask for like the fucking latest and greatest baby Uh, how do I do this? Is it like this? I thought it was. Major ver and minor ver, my bad. Okay. And then does this like, re does this replace them if it's wrong? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Maybe we won't. Uh, does it, is it like failable? Maybe. Who will see? We'll see. Uh, what's the implementation here? So he calls this with GL. Oh, interesting. Right, so if we're like in GTK, this will call this, which will go into EGL. Okay, yeah, it makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. And then here, does the params, do we like update these? No. No, they're just doing it as a pointer to... Pass it around cheaply, I guess. Sure. And then what happens if this like fails? Does the, was there a failable in here? I guess EGL create context could fail. Which would kind of get us all the way up. So probably this because like maybe we need to null check this. Maybe. Maybe. Um, but we'll find out at some point. <laughs> uh, okay, so we make the console current with our GL context like this. And uh, surely, I guess this probably can fail in some way, shape, or form, right? Just kind of like hand wavy. It's just, if it's returning an int, there's got to be a reason. Uh, so it returns negative one or zero. So if 
I don't know, if this is not equal to zero, if this in general, I guess, in this language, we say, uh, printf, oh no, no GL context, sad, frowny face, or something, I don't know. Um, then I guess if our current, our context is current, then we can do this, maybe. M maybe, <laughs> who knows? Let's see if we get a little red screen. Uh, let's get out of this VirGL thing and try to end up back in our GPU testing environment. I guess we can probably just run here. Like this. Uh, okay. So he's mad. Con GL failed. So con GL does not exist. Right. So that's going to be, uh, sorry, here. This thing. Someone has to create this thing. So this happens on set GL context. Okay. Which must happen after some initialization, I would think. Kind of just kind of off rip, huh? Okay, so why, hmm, very surprising, very surprising. So maybe we have to look at the call path in another driver for when they call this make context current. Right, we can kind of assume, or even maybe on context create. Right, this is failing, and this is where we're failing. Right, he's asserting that this exists and it doesn't. So the question would be why? Why, why, why? Okay, so they, in their driver, what is like the call trace here? This happens in like, 3D callbacks. Uh, which maybe all don't like trigger till later. And maybe we need to like, maybe the initialization of our, maybe we need some sort of like lazy initialization here. Where like, uh, we saw that the console GL was applied in like GTK in it, and maybe GTK is not up at this point. That seems maybe possible, right? Because like somebody needs to call this get flags to say that we're looking for OpenGL. I guess they could be, they could have called this like fucking immediately. That's like a definite possibility. Uh, but it looks like they just call set hardware ops. And this, I guess, uh, uh, we can look for who calls get flags here. Looks like this is the area. Who's on display change listener? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm down to kind of just like run it later. I don't really know if we have a way to do that reliably here. But we could try kind of doing this same thing on like our first frame rate or something. Just to see, just to see. So if we did that like here, when we uh, upload our, our uh, frame data, our like model data, we could see if we crash here and we could even do it like earlier Really, we could do it on like first push here. Just to see. Just to see. All right, so nothing should happen here until we call test app. At which point, uh, Okay, nothing crashed, which is good, but also it's kind of hard to tell what happened because we try to do other stuff. So can we like maybe 
uh, edit our test app here a little bit so that he doesn't uh, try to draw anything. That would be cool. That'd be cool. Let's exit this stuff. We don't need this anymore. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do UDHCPC ENP3SO03, I think, to turn on networking in our virtual machine. Then we can go into our test app and we can basically use SSH to copy a new version of the program over. So we should be able to be like, zig build and SCP this stuff. And let's just see if we see like a red. Okay, so he's mad because uh, this fucking code doesn't compile right now. Oops. Oopsies. I probably didn't update. Uh, I was like working on this off stream and I just forgot to finish. <laughs> uh, okay. So I see no red here. <coughs> no red, but also it feels like I didn't uh, if true return early enough, probably. I probably wanted to. I probably wanted to move this down here or something. I don't know, man. This set our CRTC is where the, the smiley face actually gets rendered to the screen. So can we skip that? And do it down here. Okay, so I don't really see him clearing the screen here, which is a little concerning. But I also don't see him crashing, which is kind of nice. Kind of nice. Uh, I'm going to run this one more time because I want to just make sure that we never get the yellow smiley face. I just want to confirm that. Uh, test app dev DRI card one. And so now we do get the yellow smiley, which means that I didn't do what I thought I did uh, in this program. Which is not good, which is not good. Although this is the only place. It is the only place. So it shouldn't happen. Maybe I didn't build and copy it over. That's like a very real possibility. Uh, UDHCPC-IEMP03. Okay, how do I... Hold on. Hold on. Oh yeah, he does exit immediately. Okay, one more, one more try, just to make sure that I'm testing what I think I'm testing. So now we should be fairly certain that nobody calls set CRTC. This is not initialized. Root, test app dev DRI card one, please. Oopsies, card one, please. Card one, please. Yeah, okay. So now we're just stuck at guess is not initialized as the GPU, which is kind of more expected. More expected, but it also means that this is not like resetting the GPU. So I wonder if we still have to basically flush the display here. Right? Maybe we have to do a full update after we do our GL clear. That wouldn't surprise me. That would not surprise me too much. I also wonder if maybe we actually do need to make a surface too. That's also a possibility, but I don't really see why we would unless it like copies the thing that we rendered out into like pixel data on CPU. But I don't think that it should do that. That wouldn't make sense to me. So I'm gonna assume that doesn't happen because obviously nothing can happen unless I understand it. <laughs> Test app. Dev DRI card one. Okay, let's see if we see anything here. No, so he's still just not initialized display yet. Okay. Okay. So what do we do here? Uh, we do commit frame, re GFX replace surface. So can I do this with like, OpenGL, he does create texture con new surface.
So this is called from replace surface as well as display change listener. Mm. Okay. I mean, it does kind of seem like we just are supposed to call this still. So I guess we will. I guess we will. We'll try that. I'm not really convinced still. You know? But we can try it and just see what happens. So I guess we'll maybe... There's kind of two options here. We like do our rendering, then we update the display surface. But that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, hmm. Hum, 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 hum. Okay, so who goes make current here? This goes from this, which gets into vert GL render callbacks. We saw earlier that uh, we saw that they had like some sort of like three D callback. Um, somewhere, it was in like a process command or something. They had like submit 3D and we were like, anyone who calls this might render. So do they like, after doing this, do they like call a re-render? No, which is kind of weird. Kind of weird. Where are their like consoles, right? I guess anyone, the QEMU graphics console is the thing in charge of displaying stuff. So surely vert anywhere they actually do like a frame reset would use that thing, right? In the same way that we are using it uh, in our thing. Where was it? It was in commit frame, right? We're using this console here to do our surface replace. So they would have to do something similar if they're working on the console. So maybe it makes sense to look at their usage of that thing. Graphic console in it, right? We can kind of like just look for usages of this maybe and try to see if anything in here looks interesting. Uh, so mm, replace surface, update full, replace surface, replace surface, update, GL scan out, disable, maybe, replace surface, make current, create, kind of interested to see, this is like in the GL stuff. Right, vert IO GPU vert GL. Scan out texture. Hold on. What's this? What is this? There's also GL update. Do they call this? Oh, they do. Okay, okay. Ah, so when they flush, they call an update on this thing. Wait, that looks promising. That looks promising. Um, but also, we're kind of missing, like, an initialization of the viewport or anything like that. Which kind of seems bad. Right? So is there like some sort of like,
uh, like, make GL surface type thing. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What does this do? So... EGL scan out flush. He makes current. Draws the texture, draws the cursor. Otherwise... He tries to do some sort of like guess frame over thing. What about in like the other version? Q is an area for render. Could be. Is there like documentation on this stuff? No. It's kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. It'd be nice to not just have to fucking guess. Wouldn't they call this stuff? Where do they get, like, the width and height from? RF. Resource flush. Hmm. Uh, okay, so they have, like, some sort of, like, scan out height. I'm trying to look for, like, anything that looks like, like, initialization. But... Maybe we're just not that lucky. Maybe we're not that lucky. Resource flush. Hmm. There's also something here that's interesting, like them setting the renderer with their like renderer callbacks right they had the like make context current thing so create context they just call create here then they make current and then right fence might also be interesting here but nothing crazy here i think this is just like a gpu queue management so i think it's fine uh, yeah, I guess we'll just try calling update here, and, like, we'll try calling it, like, 0, 0, 10, 24, 7, 68 or something, and, like, let's just kind of, like, see what happens. And then, I don't think they called GFX update full here. I don't know, let's just see. Let's see. Hero Dev, thanks for the raid. What's up, you guys? What's up, what's up, what's up? We are working on... Trying to add a hardware acceleration to our fake graphics card. Because um, we are making a fake GPU in the hopes that we will um, someday understand how a GPU actually works. So that we could build one ourselves if we wanted to. But before we get there, there's a lot of work to do. And so we are integrating a graphics card into QEMU. He can, in fact, draw stuff. Uh, but we are trying to figure out how to do like a fixed render pipeline 3D acceleration thing. Um, and to do that, we need to figure out how to like render stuff with OpenGL to the screen in QEMU. And so that's kind of where we're where we're sitting right now is like, how do we fucking render to this thing? Um, really doesn't seem like there's much other use of this. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. They're using a DMA buff scan out. Okay, hold on. QEMU console resize to width height. Then they set the scan out with the DMA buff. Okay. And they call this with QEMU DMA buff new. All right, you know what? This is maybe interesting. 
Now, I don't really know if we have to do that, but it does seem like we are missing some sort of initialization thing. Is there another option for scan out here? Scan out disable, DMA buff. And I think I saw texture as well. I'm pretty sure. Scan out texture. Ah, so the scan out is probably, the scan out is probably the like output page thing. And presumably we have to use something something to set it so who calls scan out texture because i want i don't really want to do dma buff i don't have to so that's kind of like here who calls this set scan out here sets it to texture if i see so like Someone is trying to set the output and they might have done it in like different ways. This comes from some sort of like guess command, I guess. Hmm. Then how do they make this? Oops, this was in the wrong spot. Here. This comes from some like Virgil thing. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, we could render to a texture and then try displaying it. That's not crazy. It's really not crazy. Can we also I mean, it depends also on like what the parameter here is. He has him as a void star, which I assume is like a texture handle. I kind of assume. Let me look at like some implementation of this thing. Uh, probably the other one. EGL scan out texture. Uh, yeah. So he's just calling bind frame buffer, which comes from a FB. So what were what, what our inputs here again? It was like a void star was coming here. D3D text 2D. So where does this go? Nowhere. Nowhere. He doesn't use this at all. Okay. Okay. So he just says, yo, I have this thing width height top and he like sets that thing up so maybe we can just call this function it does kind of feel that way huh it's weird that that was never used in the like EGL, uh, GTK EGL, was that where we were? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're certain that this is not used, right? Pretty damn sure. So I guess we could just try running this and see what happens. Yeah, I'm kind of down. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Where were we first? Sparrow, C. So, console. What else does this thing need? Backing ID. Oh, fuck. We didn't make it that far. This thing is probably much more interesting. That's probably the fucking texture ID, right? 
Uh, backing ID is the second last parameter. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. So this like renders to a texture, but then also it's like not really clear to me. It's really not clear to me like how this gets displayed on the screen either. Really, really not clear. Really not clear. I like that it's just like, it just says like required. It's like so not obvious to me. What this stuff actually does. <laughs> Okay, but hand wavy. I re I mean re I don't even really know what a scan out is. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Um, but I guess we kind of have to do something. We have to do something. So is there another option that feels like? the most likely thing gl update again also sounded promising so if like where does this go egl flush which calls like scan out flush oh yeah so they say if we have the texture then we probably draw that thing yeah 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 okay so then we just have to make sure that when they when we draw that texture which was wherever the fuck we were which way do I'm, am i going here that oh this is only on the cursor texture though So there's also window, guest, frame buffer. So all of these are different things. EGL frame buffers, which have textures, which has like FB setup for texture. Uh, which does go in here. Yeah, so if we call setup for texture, he will use that and he will draw it later i think we saw that like draw arrays somewhere here uh fuck where was it egl scan out flush yeah uh if we have cursor we render we're using textures but if there's no curse then we just do a f simple frame buffer blit which binds the frame buffer for draw and read then calls gl blit frame buffer what's that do i've never seen that before but that seems promising it sounds promising. Copy a block of pixels from one frame buffer to another. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. I think this makes sense. I think it makes sense. So my current mental model is that uh, there is a command to like bind texture as backing texture for render on flush this will be copied to an output frame buffer. <coughs> and there's kind of like multiple options for a source of copy to test frame buffer, right? So there was like, let's even find it, like multiple scan outs, right? There was like scan out texture, scan out DMA buff, um, scan out disable. So it sounds kind of like, sounds kind of like we're supposed to bind the texture. He'll set up a frame buffer to render with. We just need to like allocate a texture externally for him. Uh, 
then we call dpy update to actually get them to copy that thing to the output frame buffer. That's kind of like my, the way it feels right now. Um, now I have a question still though about in the non OpenGL case. We saw this like display surface thing that I feel like we're not working with. So they kind of have like create texture. Ooh, okay. So they create a new texture for the new surface and they apply it. So I wonder if we're supposed to do this. Where we like... Okay, wait, wait. So this has a display surface. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, does this get called anywhere else? Display console. Yeah. Does it get called anywhere? Uh. Yeah. Kind of feels okay. So this comes in with a display service. The display service has like data on him, right? If I remember correctly from Sphero, see our display surface, we create it from pixel data. Then we say replace with this surface and he calls, a, he creates a new texture. Okay, which does something. Uh, right, so he binds the texture and apply, uploads the data to it. Then calls display listener GFX switch. Which doesn't feel quite right, doesn't feel quite right. But, what does he do? He calls GFX update. Which is what we did. Which is what we did. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, wait, wait, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense. Okay, 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 okay. So let's call... Uh, I think, I think we don't have to do anything. Yeah, I think we just make the texture. I think we just make the texture normally. I think we just create the texture normally, and then we're chilling. I also wanted to see if, uh, you know, is there a helper for us here? EGL helpers, gen textures. Uh, all right, import texture. Yeah, fuck it. I guess we'll just write ourselves. So we will basically do this. You know, something along these lines. Something along these lines. So we're going to like make a texture. Right? We're going to be like, yo, give me a texture. Uh, we're going to enable that thing, I guess. Bind it. Then we're not actually going to do any of the upload. We will set these parameters, fuck it. Then we have a texture now that we can use as the backing ID. Okay, and then we have all of this stuff to pack in. Uh, this is null. But everything else needs to... Uh, backing Y zero top, uh, false, I don't give a shit. Backing width. Uh, does that mean we need to actually set the texture parameters here? Like, do we have to call GL text image 2D? And can we call GL text image 2D without data? I can't remember. I think you can. I think you can be like, this is just null. I think.
I think you can. Data, you can, yeah. Uh, oopsies, let me just look for, like, null. Data may be a null pointer. In this case, texture memory is allocated to comment texture with height. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, here, we're just going to be like, yo, I'm going to make something that's, like, 1024 by 768. And then I want, like, I think it's RGB, oh, God, uh, order format type. So, format... I guess we just go like GLRGB and the type. Uh, we can kind of back it with whatever we want, but this seems kind of fine. Uh, seems fine by me. Then we set the texture to our texture, right? Uh, oops. Oh, yeah. Uh, false. Backing width, backing height. So this is going to be uh, 1024, 768. I'm a little confused with what backing is here, actually. I'm not going to lie. So let's go back and just peek in this again. So when they call GL scan up texture, this goes into some EGL function here. Backing width gets set here. And then it looks like this stuff is kind of like, uh, they're probably gonna like clip the back, the, the actual texture into some like smaller texture would be my guess here. Cause now when they actually do the texture setup, they don't care about this stuff. So we'll just kind of say that we're using the full fucking size, right? We can be like, uh, fuck, even as fate. Hello, hello. Uh, backing width, backing white, X, Y, with height so zero zero oopsie sorry backing with back uh fuck 1024 768 zero zero 1024 768 zero zero something i can't remember backing backing width backing height x y width height and then null here all right i think there's like a non-zero chance this works uh, I guess we actually have to uh, do some OpenGL stuff. So the GL clear, I think, probably happens after we bind it, right? So we have this, if I'm, if we saw correctly, sets this as like the active frame buffer. So then we do this, and then we say, okay, can you like fucking do this, like apply this shit now? I think there's like a there's a chance. There's a chance. Waiting for you to get curious and reading lib socket can in zig. You know, we might as well look. What the fuck is socket can? You, uh, open source can drivers, networking stack. By, contributed by Volkswagen Research. It's <laughs> pretty funny. I'm not going to look at that right now, but it does sound kind of fun. I like the idea that you've been like sitting here being like, maybe he'll do it tomorrow. Like, it's coming up. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, okay. So, EGL make current failed is not promising. And we're kind of, we've seen this behavior before. I can't remember when. I think it was when we call, forgot to call GFX update. Right? I remember seeing this as, like, a, I, I think that we saw this before when we didn't call this guy. Uh, but also it's possible that uh, this stuff was important there as well. I mean, we might as well, you know, we're, we're poking and prodding. We'll figure it out. Run. So, root, test app, dev, DRI card one, oopsie is one. Now we're getting guess is not initialized to display yet. That's kind of interesting. So, 
surface. Con surface. Uh, okay. Sure. So the lack of display surface here is also is probably fucking us again. Okay. Hmm. But then we're back to the problem of display surfaces having to co come from like some image data. Right? I guess only maybe. Uh, can we like see if this comes from like a function call? Um, hum, 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 hum. God damn, dude. God damn. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, this just calls create display service from under the hood, under the hood. Huh. Okay, so I feel like we were getting close, though. Kind of here. This felt close, to be honest. Because, like, without that GFX update at the bottom, we did see, like, <laughs> something happen. <laughs> we saw a change of behavior, which is really all we could ask for at this point. Because uh, we're lost as shit, for sure. Test app dev DRI card one. Right, I think this is when we saw, yeah, here we saw make current failed and a like kind of fucked up buffer. So at the very least, he's trying to do something, which is huge for us. We could have been wrong about a lot of stuff in here. Right, for sure. So can we look again at this scan out texture thing? He calls GL scan out texture, who we are pretty sure is in the EGL path of this guy. And yeah, he calls bind frame buffer and GL frame buffer texture 2DX, which says, this is our color attachment to this thing, right? That's basically what he says. Set scan out mode. Okay, so you're like, hey, we're in scan out mode now. And what is this? Part of a virtual GFX console in GTK stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to think too much about that. It calls make current on the like correct OpenGL thing. Although it was saying that failed, which is kind of odd. Right, we saw it somewhere. EGL make current failed, so that's concerning. Definitely. Um, which would be from here. So this comes from here. Which comes from here. Yeah, so our thing is like immediately fucking failing. Kind of surprising, to be honest. Uh, so how can this fail? How can this fail? Oh, wait, no, this is this is not the right place. This is con this is colon percent s. This is just no nothing. So it's actually none of these. I guess this is some like G GTK library error. Interesting. Interesting. So, 
when they do this, do they have to like put it back after? That's a possibility that like maybe you have to restore whatever context was there before. And do they give us that as an option? Uh, fuck, it was here. So this calls like EGL make current. I can't remember if you can like retrieve what the previous context was. Um, binds context to the recurrent rendering draw read services, draws used for operations. Mm, no, not that I see. Can you like, uh, yeah, it doesn't really return anything that looks like that. Okay. Okay. Arguably. Mm, fuck everything, man. Do you want EGL get current context? It cut. Yeah, there's a part of me that just kind of feels like we have to restore it after. I wonder if also we don't do this, actually. This could be a mistake. Right? If, like, if we just say, hey, we're going to use this texture and, like, do whatever you want to do with it, maybe that will prevent this from saying, like, running into issues. Maybe we're not supposed to call that. Maybe. Maybe. Let's try. Let's try. Fuck it. Because we have to do something, right? Just staring and being confused won't help us forever. That, to me... Oh, uh, we're in the same state, huh? We're in the same state where well, that still fucks shit up. Uh, I guess, yeah, this is a little sketchy. I'd like to try maybe removing this as well. Like, let's not try clearing the screen right now. Let's just try attaching the texture, right? Does just attaching the texture and doing literally nothing else cause problems? My guess would be no, but we can find out, right? It's possible that we were, like, clearing, we were calling jail clear in, like, a context we weren't supposed to. I don't think we're doing anything else interesting there, so I think it's fine. I guess it's fine. Run? I wish it wasn't so hard sometimes, man. All I want to do is, like, have some fun. You know, I got a feeling I'm not the only one. That's not the actual answer. I've just had a song in my head. Um, but all I want to do is, like, fucking get an open jail context. You know? And it just seems like... Yeah, so even just attaching the fucking texture here is causing problems. You know, it just feels like it shouldn't be this difficult. Um, I guess this does bind a frame buffer. Which seems kind of sketchy. Uh, this is interesting as well. Kumu console resize, but maybe not, you know, super important. Um, this seems interesting, maybe. Maybe printing the result of EGL get current context before doing anything would be informative. In particular, do we have context at all when we issue these open EGL calls? Yeah, that's not a crazy. That's not crazy. I guess I disabled the creation of the context and making it current because I was concerned that it would be colliding with someone else. But yeah, maybe it, that doesn't seem crazy. Yeah, EGL get current context. Uh, does this like, what does this do? EGL get current context. He returns an EGL context, and this thing is not really, like, introspectable, right?
do you call up and do it from different threads? That's another good question. Definitely another good question. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a really good point because there is like thread local data in OpenGL's API for sure. Um, can we like like EGL EGLH? So like, what is this thing? Void star. Uh, which I guess would be null if it wasn't valid. Uh, so maybe we could be like. We could at least just print it. You're right that it's not crazy to just be like, what the fuck is this thing? What is it? Percent P? Might as well. Might as well. I'm not really convinced that this will tell us anything that's that exciting. What is it mad about? Undefined reference? Ugh. Uh, EGL make current. So they're probably going through some other thing here. EGL context, maybe? EGL helpers. Where is our, like, this is an EGL generated epoxy. Epoxy. Um, so probably want this thing somehow, I guess. I don't fucking know, man. I don't know. <laughs> what language is weird language? C. It's C. We're in C. <laughs> um, okay. So test app dev DRI card one. He fucks some shit up when we get in here. Uh, but before we did that, we were trying to see. Before we print out all of this shit. Back, 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 back. Dude, how many fucking lines am I printing? Okay. Okay, so that is an indicator of something. So if we go in here now and we try to create a GL context, I guess we don't really know as well um, that we're actually in the EGL path. That's not like 100% guaranteed. I thought it was because I know that we're in like the GTK path, but I guess there is this other path here as well. which is using GDK, which would kind of line up with this GDK warnings, I guess, if GDK under the hood is using EGL. It's a possibility. Uh, but let's see if that does anything different. Multiple threads calling OpenGL functions and standards. Yeah, I know, I know. But I would imagine that if like, so I'm kind of working under the assumption here that uh, the vert IO GL thing is calling open GL calls just raw in some of their callbacks, which makes me think it's possible to behave that way. But I could just be wrong. That's definitely a possibility. Uh, can we search for EGL? So at least now we have an EGL context when we're calling it, if we call those functions, which makes sense. Which makes me think that we should almost like, like, disable the context after. Right? Like, if somebody's like mad at us for doing something, he's like, yo, you shouldn't be like, m my guess here, my guess here is that someone checks if we have a context or something and initializes in that case. And then we're making a context current here, and that's fucking shit up? No, because it that happens whether or not we create a context.
Um, I'm pretty sure that as long as only one thread has the context current at any one time, you're good. Nobody does that as far as I know because driver vendors have historically said it's slow. Gotcha. So far, can I make a... I made a game in C for my new project. Can I share with you and you improve it? Uh, no. 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 No, no. Um, all right. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Um, I wonder if there's, like, open GL. Like, if we just, like, <laughs> uh, can we, like, QEMU, open GL, right? Like, are we, that's not helpful. That's not helpful. Uh, QEMU, open GL, surface. Yeah, uh, great. Great, great, great. Okay, none of this is really what I want. Not really what I want. I was really hoping, hoping this would be simple. It felt like it was going to be. Because, like, we have OpenGL, you know, available to us. Things are being drawn to the screen with OpenGL. All I want to fucking do is throw that shit on there. I guess, like, the, the backup plan here could be to um, render some stuff ourselves pull the pixels out into a frame buffer, then copy the frame buffer into open to like QEMU stuff. Although I think that's stupid. I think that's stupid. Okay, who calls this? Vert IOGU G Vert Vert GL create context. Make context current. Right fence. Yeah, it just feels it feels so close. So when they init these this thing. Oh, hold on, hold on. What's going on here? Um okay, nothing crazy. Nothing I'm too interested in. Right, so they like initialize the Virgil thing and they give him this ability to create a context by calling this. And then they have a function to call make context current. We could maybe see if in Virgil it like tries to restore the existing context, except it doesn't have a function callback for like query current context, right? So it seems like it should be safe in some some in some scenarios to call this make context current, right? We just but w I guess we haven't confirmed that that's not okay, right? The, the, I guess we we were okay with making the context current. It was as soon as we tried to call this scan out texture thing that became a problem, actually. I think if we don't call that, the GPU, like, the, the display doesn't get, like, fucked. It just also doesn't do anything that we want. Right? Like, if we call run here. Uh, de test app, dev DRI card 1. Right? Now it just says guest is not initialized display yet. So I guess using a context here is, like, not wrong. That's like allowed to, we're allowed to do that. It's more this that seems to be the problem, right? GL scan of texture, which would make sense if we're just doing like some fucking dumb shit, right? And we probably are. We probably are. So let's run one more time and make sure that we should be broken. The window should look like crap. Yeah, we're seeing make current failed, things are starting to flicker, and then it's fine if we go somewhere else. Okay, that's where we're, I'm starting to feel like I have some clues. So who else, what does this do again? He calls in here, he calls scan on texture. Does anyone else call this? They do. Okay, under what context? So when the console display has changed, they call scan out texture if the thing that they're okay. So they're like, I think this is when I like click on that that just that uh 
window to switch between like uh, the serial console or my display. That's probably what's happening here. Probably what's happening here. And they're basically saying like, if we had a scan out texture, then we should do that thing. Which I believe is set here. Okay. So that kind of makes me feel like it makes sense uh, in some way for us to be using this thing. <coughs> right? Like, I, I'm fairly confident that we should be able to display something with a backing texture here. I wonder if there's some sort of, like, flush that they do after. Re register display change listener. GFX switch, GFX create texture from the surface. I mean, our surface surely is not valid, right? There's something we're, we're missing kind of the piece of like, how the fuck do you throw things on display? Which kind of makes me want to do something that's just like make a display surface. QEMU create display surface. And then I want to like swap the display surface in just to see if that does anything, man. Then we do all this other stuff. Uh, okay. And scan, scan out kind is scan out service. No, this is wrong again though. Because we want scan out kind to be scan out texture. These are our options. And then if it's surface, they create a texture out of the surface anyways, which is confusing. Okay. And then they just use that anyways. They call switch and then update. And is switch kind of exposed to us anywhere? Not really. Not really. Okay. Can we look for usages of scan out texture? It's literally just DPI GL scan out texture. And which is only called from here. What's this do? Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. This is a clue. So they call this, even though they're rendering from a texture. So can we just do this? That is a clue for sure. Oh, which is essentially the same thing we did here. Okay. Uh, I mean, let's call this instead. Let's just see what happens. Uh, all right, maybe. I mean, doesn't hurt, right? And then we still might want to call update full here. What does update full do now? Feels like it might want this as well, right? Because now that we actually have a surface, maybe this is reasonable because this was like going to do something reasonable now. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, sorry, I was missing some chat messages there. Uh, uh, 
uh, may I ask you uh, something about shaders, such as render texture? Were uh, I think that you might have been coming back from a part of Happy Hour stream. Uh, we're kind of we did a pivot, uh, a sorry, a topic pivot, um, because we're in the mainstream segment now. So uh, we just kind of we'll come back to that another time. If you were talking about working on that like monkey texturing we were doing this uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, may I ask you how many years you're in C++? Sorry for the dumb question. Just trying to con consolidate if I'm a slow learner. Oh, this looks quite hard. Uh, one, this is in C++. But two, I have a, you know, a fair amount of experience in C++. Like, I mean, I've been programming for a long time, like 15 years, right? And probably C++ was like at least five of those. So C++ kind of is hard to you, man. I think C... Like, yeah, C++ is fucking hard. <laughs> this is C, and there's all sorts of, like, other stuff going on here. I think the problem here is mostly that, like, there's some sort of, like, guarantees that this API is expecting us to uphold, and we just aren't doing them because we don't know where to read about them. So we're just kind of, like, poking and prodding until we find something that looks kind of sane to us. I think we're assuming we're figuring out if QMU... Uh, I think we're assuming we're figuring out if QMU sets all that stuff up for us. As far as I can tell, the current theory is that we give it a texture and it finds shaders and does the draw call. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, all right. CPP might, must be, might be the hardest language to master. JavaScript is a close second. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Both of those languages do a lot of unexpected shit. <laughs> like, a lot of unexpected shit. Um, okay. This is actually... Maybe a good thing? We're seeing a black screen, but nothing on it? Which kind of... Feels like... It's better than it crashing, right? I think that we're... we're if we kind of comment out these lines... Uh, before, we were getting, like, a corrupt OpenGL state, and I think now we're not, which is good. We will see. Give me one second. Uh, test app dev DRI card one. Sphero likes having it, his fingers in like five different ecosystems for projects. So yeah, stuff is hard to follow. Don't feel bad. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Don't feel bad. We're touching a lot. Okay, yeah. So this is broken again. Broken again. Which means that this GFX update full was probably doing some heavy lifting. Kind of just hand wavy. That's kind of my guess here. I uncomment this, and we probably just go back to black screen with nothing of interest on it. Which I guess is, like, a good thing. That kind of means that, like, I don't know if it gets us closer to our desired goal of having an open jail context within QEMU. Um, but it gets us closer to not falling over, which I guess is good. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now, I guess we're also not doing anything. So I'd be kind of interested to see if this bringing this GL clear back actually does what we expect. It might. There's like a non-zero chance. I would say a low non-zero chance, but <laughs> it might. I kind of forgot we commented that out, to be honest. Root, test app, dev, DRI card, one. Uh, yeah, so still black. So, what does this update full do? He calls GFX update. Who calls update texture. When we call GL update, this does a DPY GL update. Which I think that we said does the actual frame buffer copy, if I remember correctly. We said this calls GL flush, which does this frame buffer blitting, which did the copy from one context to another. And then this guy, what does he do? GFX update calls update texture. Um, which takes the surface texture and sets the data from the surface. Bytes per pixel surface plus x data. Surface data, yeah. Which kind of feels like not what we want. 
Like, what? What is this thing? Like, surface data calls, like, Pixman get down. Yeah, so we're back on Pixman shit. So no wonder it fixes itself, is because he's just overriding our shit with our... Oh! What's display change listener? DCL loops over listeners. Okay. Oy, 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 oy. So now I'm back to thinking that this isn't what we want. I'm kind of thinking that this update full call just feels like it's going in the wrong direction. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Just hand wavy. It feels like it. We're kind of like... making this large assumption that like we we i don't really know i don't even know what the assumption is i just feel like we're making assumptions <laughs> we are making assumptions it really feels like this is the flow though and where else do they call replace surface nowhere but I feel like I've seen other replace services in here. Because we copied it from somewhere before. We copied... Yeah, this came from like vert IO GPU somewhere in here. So every time he... So sometimes he does like a replace with null. This is where we saw this, like, important piece that we were missing. So I remember I remember last time we were doing this, we called replace surface, then we called update full, and without update full, we were in that kind of, like, fucked up state. The same fucked up state, the same fucked up state we're in now. It feels very similar. So I wonder if there's some sort of, like, equivalent call to this GFX update. But we saw this GL update function. Did we lose that? No, he's still here. He's still here. Hmm. And I forget if we've if we've run this test already. I can't remember, so we're just gonna run it again. We're just gonna run it again because I need to gain confidence that I understand what's happening. Uh, test app dev dri card one so do we expect to be fucked up here i think we do yeah and he is okay so that kind of i guess with my current understanding that kind of makes sense right because this dpi gfx update is basically replacing the texture He's calling dpy gfx update texture, which takes like a software buffer, pixman buffer that's just full of pixels, and here like surface data on this thing, and he hucks that into the surface texture. So then the question becomes is, can we like interact with this surface texture ourselves? You know, like update texture, create texture. This is all from from pixel pixman stuff. So there's console GL stuff. Wait. Yeah, he's, all of this is like surface texture, surface texture, surface texture. And like, where is this called? Destroy texture. I see. 
dpy gl dpy gl which i don't really understand any of this stuff yet but we'll kind of get there so it make it almost makes me feel like the gfx prefix is like kind of disjoint from the gl prefix it seems like gfx kind of everything in gfx is like talking about a cpu pixel buffer kind of feels that way kind of feels that way which means that looking at like dpi gufux update full doesn't really help me it really feels like this dpi gl stuff makes more sense to me makes more sense which then which then kind of makes me feel like well if in the gfx case you needed to call update full for it not to get fucked up then like dpi gl update seems like the equivalent call hand wavy it just feel it just does feel that way and what does he do again i know we've looked at this like a million times but we have to remember uh we were looking at the open egl version right this is where he did like the blitting uh he copied one th one thing to another he copied the window frame buffer from the guest frame buffer uh source and death so source here is the second argument so yeah the guest frame buffer he copies that into the window frame buffer uh-huh uh-huh so then like does this thing get set anywhere uh okay maybe not so we were kind of working on the assumption that that like a uh, set scan out buffer thing kind of like initialized this uh okay sorry uh things coming in in chat I think you might be mixing up OS display over calls with OGL calls. Somewhat, somewhat, yeah. That's kind of my current thought as well. That this, I thought that we were setting this guest frame buffer thing, but maybe we're not. Maybe we're not. We're not. Maybe this. So when we call the set scan out texture, this guy. just kind of makes a frame buffer oh yeah with the guest frame buffer wait that's that's here vc guest frame buffer here so he says hey i'm going to delete the old version i'm going to create a new one and i'm going to bind the frame buffer you pass in or bind the texture you pass into this thing right am i yeah, the texture you passed in is bound to the, our guest frame buffer. So that feels actually all right. That's kind of what I was expecting. And so here I expect if the frame buffer is bound, then we should be able to go in here. He calls GL update. And then it copies here somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. He blitz the guest frame buffer to the win frame buffer. That feels like it's all what I would expect. So the question becomes, why is it fucking broken? The threading thing kind of makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Although, then how come if it was a threading thing, like if, if somehow we're in like an extra thread, how come this like GFX update full call is fine? Because this GFX update full call, call also does open gl stuff eventually right he gets into this like here 
where he's calling OpenGL stuff. Without binding a context, he must bind a context somewhere. Uh, I don't see a context bind. Which is maybe concerning. Arguably. Right, maybe we are doing this in the wrong context. Did we try, did we try this? Uh, where we don't call these and we just fucking make our texture and set the scan out. Kind of like that. I don't know how we would know that we have, like, we're allowed to use our OpenGL context, but maybe. If I remember correctly, you can create textures from other threads, but only run from main thread. Oh, yeah, that would be another... Another confusing piece, then. Test app dev DRI card one. What's weird to me, though, is that, like, clearly these, like, display callbacks should be getting called from the right thread. Right, like, there's no reason for them not to be. I wonder if we're just doing this in the wrong spot, but we saw, we saw that they were calling GL draw rays in these, like, just arbitrary callbacks in the vert GL version of the function. Hmm. This is fun. Frustrating, but fun. There's kind of a red flag here that nobody's calling GL gen textures. I guess it would be hidden in the vergl callback stuff. I guess that's a possibility. EGL scan out texture. Set up new text, set up four text. So this is kind of where we are supposed to be. Is it possible that we've kind of done something stupid here? Scan out DMA buff. Do we, is the scan out DMA buff? Maybe we look at these examples as well, just kind of for like peace of mind. So DMA buff uses these like file descriptors that it gets from uh, Linux. And you can kind of like share GPU buffers with these things. So in some cases they might be doing that for some fucking reason. Uh, which seems kind of weird, but like, you know, it might, it might give us a clue as for like the different types of backing things that are used. So he said, he tries to update with DMA buff in this example, or he says, hey, let me call this. And then in there, all he does is he calls a console resize with set scan out, okay. Then if that succeeds, right? If this is zero, then he calls update scan out, which, kind of cues up this like sure he just kind of resets the width and height I guess which is fine then he creates a surface for this scan out so only if we don't have GL though but we do have GL in which case we call this which he kind of did already. Okay. Now we know from our previous experience though that GFX replace surface was not enough, right? So where does this get called from? This calls, gets called from do set scan out, which then immediately calls GFX update full unconditionally, 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 right? So. That brings me back to thinking that this has to be there, right? Hand wavy, this has to be there. Now they didn't call GL update, but they did call the equivalent of scan out, right? So this kind of lines up with our expectation of it uh, not being shit, 
right? This lines up with like the how do we say how do I say this? Um like the black screen is what we saw here, not the corrupted screen. But I don't believe that I believe that we've tried this combination before and did not see red. I believe we just saw black. Can we double check that? Is not, is not understanding anything here normal or am I an imposter after all? I mean, I think that I, uh, when I am confused, definitely my ability to explain what's happening is harder or is worse, sorry. Um, and also, I think that like watching someone jump around is always a little confusing, for sure. Um, so I wouldn't feel necessarily bad. It just means that it's kind of probably bad content. <laughs> um, and yeah, now we're back at the black screen. Back at the black screen, which makes sense. Which makes sense. So... Also, there are 12 videos times 2 or 3 hours of previous context. Yeah. <laughs> so... I mean, there's also, like, a chance here that, like, now everything's working right and our texture is just bound fucking wrong, right? That's also just, like, a very real possibility. A very real possibility. Deep UI, scan out, right? We were kind of looking at these types of functions. Scan out, disable. Yeah, scan out, texture. So we're like here he calls scan out texture. We can kind of assume that this force context um, calls back into that function from before that calls make context current. Right, we can kind of assume that they're calling this DPY GL make current, which I think is the same thing we're calling. I guess maybe making assumptions at this point though, when we're this lost, is not a good uh not necessarily like the best thing to do. That might be fucking stupid because like we're obviously confused. So it's maybe not reasonable to behave that way. Uh, I copy paste this run because I think I've seen back to back calls like this in other areas before. So we should probably confirm. Let's go look at Virgil. And can we look for uh like usages of the make current function or the force ctx zero thing right that force ctx i think was the call that we were kind of making assumptions on force ctx zero right what does this do he calls this thing current context is equal to context oh so this actually has nothing to do Oh yeah, here he does he does end up back into that make current call. If now equals true, which it is here. So here they they our guess was right that he does this does end up getting us into the GL context function that we passed in. So that should look something like this behavior here. They set they resize the console, then they switch the context. Then they do this scan out. So that's kind of like, that's kind of like this, right? We set the console size. We then create a context, which is maybe fucking weird, uh, but make it current, right? Maybe the fact that we're creating the context here could be something around there. I don't really see why there would be, but it's possible. It's possible. Make context current. Then we call scan out texture the same way they do here. Let's, uh, double check here that our parameters are reasonable so we have backing id from the texture texture here boom boom i'm kind of hesitant about this gl enable here maybe i don't know we bind the texture we set the data here i'm a little i'm we could be suspect of this as well and definitely there's a chance here that we did something stupid uh can we look for like another example Uh, okay. So we could maybe try to, I mean, there's zero RGB, a fuck it, let's throw some A's on here. I doubt that that matters, but maybe. They have a B G R A. maybe, I mean, I doubt that that matters. 
but you know you never know i guess and then i guess maybe we don't have to do this but i don't think it hurts i don't think it hurts gl enable gl textures is, is deprecated in 4.6 well maybe that's relevant maybe it's not maybe she's born with it i don't know um but okay so this seems like maybe fine well maybe try disabling this as well just for now okay so what else do they do here info width Uh, I think that this Y top, backing Y top thing, will just cause like a flip later, would be my assumption. But we should double check that as well. I assume that that just means somebody will uh, flip something if they don't like it. But uh, backing Y O top. Yeah, so it's just here. They flip some stuff here, right? Y one, Y two. When they blit, when they copy the, when they copy from the source of the desk, they just flip it if it says Y is your top. So that really, that thing shouldn't matter if we're just doing a GL clear. Shouldn't matter. Should not matter. Let's just be very careful here again. So we have backing O top, backing width, backing height. We set X Y width height again, and then yeah, our texture thing. So nothing seems wrong there either. I th don't know why this was commented out. I'm going to, I mean, again, I'm pretty sure we've, we've hit this test before, but at this point we're desperate to see anything. So we're just going to try that again, just in case, you know, just in case. I also don't know if I'm convinced that I saw other people calling GL update. That kind of feels like something that I just saw the letters and I liked them, but I'm not really convinced that they are, that I've seen anything that indicates we're supposed to do that. Yeah. Which again, again, black screen. <coughs> black screen again hum. Hum, 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 hum. gl scan out disable what does this do What does this do? Set scan out mode, make current, frame buffer destroy, destroy textures. Yeah, I mean, I'm really feeling like I'm missing something really obvious here. Cause it really feels like it should work. And like, I, by from looking at the source code, it doesn't make sense to me that we should be calling this GFX update full. Something about this feels wrong as well. Because like, we are kind of we kind of want our scanouts kind to be scan out texture, I feel like. But this hard sets it to scan out surface and then copies stuff in from like a Pixman texture. Right? That's I'm pretty sure that's what we're seeing here. Which is also kind of Oh wait, hold on. Scan out surface just links another guy under the hood. Uh okay, I could maybe see that then. So, like, somebody looks at this, like, scan out kind, and they say, like, if the scan out kind is equal to surface, oh, this is a assert. Is there, like, a switch? Who uses this? <laughs> uh right here this is where they use it so here when it's like hey can you show me this console please he does this extra work if he sees dma buff or texture scan outs sure otherwise it's a display surface right and here, oh, here, here, okay, GFX switch if it's surface. So this is bool update true. So this only happens if we are a surface scan out. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. That makes sense in some way. Uh, 
create texture given this surface. So, oopsies, what the fuck did I just, just do? Uh, okay. So he creates a, sur a texture from this surface. It must get output to, oh, the surface is a pointer. So this must dereference the thing. It must. It must dereference the thing. Fuck. This way. Surface. Yeah, yeah. So he's looking at the internals of the surface. And he creates a texture for this thing get from the data again, right? Again, from the data. But, but what if the data for this surface is null? Is that a thing? Also, if we're on desktop GL, is this, what's the difference here? Oh, just no swizzle. Okay. Yeah, I'm not actually 100% sure that these display surfaces always have to have data attached to them. So there might be something interesting there. No. Ugh. No, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. So this like QEMU console resize. I'm again not 100% convinced that this is right. But they do it in the other paths, which means that I must not understand something. They are doing this in the VirgL path. Right? If we look for this function, QEMU console resize. They're like fucking doing this on DMA buff paths, right? Right before setting the scan out. So why don't I understand what's happening there? In my mind, in my mind, this makes no sense because QEMU console resize replaces the display surface, and the display surface is backed by a pixel buffer on. Right, because we see like kind of scan service. Now maybe I'm wrong. So create display surface calls create display surface from with bits uh, set to null. Okay. So he actually creates a Pixman surface with nothing in it. Now uh, can we look at Pixman image create bits docs. I don't have Pixman checked out, so I would like to know. Uh, what is it? It's create bits here. Uh, Pixman image create bits. If bits is null, a buffer will be allocated and initialized to zero, right? So this is definitely creating a pixel buffer on CPU. And it's like, why? Why? Why is it doing that? Why are we creating a pixel buffer on the CPU if we're immediately trying to display something from a GPU texture? It just doesn't make sense. You know? So then they set this thing. And that probably explains why our images, our, our, our background is black, right? We can probably confirm this. Uh... By doing, oh wait, hold on. If the scanout kind is not a scanout surface though, and, what well, or surface and surface allocator, and it's not a placeholder, and the width is width and the height is height, they return. Okay, wait, wait where is this? Okay. If the scanout kind is not equal to scanout surface, right? So we're a texture. Maybe we are a texture surface, right? Then what happens here? Then they still do this stuff though, if, if the width and height have changed. Hello, have a nice day. Oh, how nice. Hello, have a nice day. <laughs> right? That's... So so no matter what, even if it even if the type is like scanout texture, they still call this. But then do they set the surface type? I guess they don't ever set it to surface explicitly here. Which is oh here they do. Here they set it to surface here.
Okay. So I'm again just lost, quite, quite, quite lost about why they would do this. If they're immediately going to replace it, right? Like, like this API here is really indicating that if you are not, if you're trying to use a texture as your backing, then like you shouldn't get a fucking display service here. Like it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Right, as soon as we call scan out texture. Oh, this is connection scan out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, console scan out. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Same shit. But as soon as we set this, he replaces it. And then also kind of odd, I would think that he should free the old scan out as well, but maybe I guess it's kind of left around just in case. It handled later. It's only replaced on the next scan out set or something. Okay. Um. Can we look at the bound frame buffer before and after? Is that a thing we can do? I'm kind of curious. If we do this, FBO ID. Uh, I'm just putting this breakdown here so that we have a like a more. Uh, we don't have to wait. We don't have to scroll so far back to see our test options. So I uh, will call this uh, before FBO and after FBO. I'm trying to see like does this in fact change the frame buffer? I think it should, but at this point we need a we need to understand. Uh, is this the wrong fucking type? Hello, please go to the page. Yeah, it looks like this one in. Okay. Uh print f uh fbo percent d to percent d, right? If this gives us two different numbers, then that means that we have some expectation that this should apply to the texture that we just bound. Right? That like the texture data in that that we have in this texture is should be red and in fact we can also check i guess uh with like by reading the texture data back to the cpu manually that's also a thing we could do for sure uh but let's kind of start small let's start small i am going to lose my mind integrating with uh software can be hard man <laughs> <laughs> and I sh I'm sure I'm doing something like my workflow here is stupid uh, but he did change the, F the frame buffer here so that's a pretty good sign it's like a pretty good sign now why it's black here is still unknown but I mean we can at least bisect the problem a little bit right the next thing we can look at here is like can you like uh, read texture to CPU uh here uh dun 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 gl get text image where are we now i don't really know if we've really made any progress in the past two hours it kind of feels like we've been kind of like bumbling around trying to understand uh egl and how or like maybe like open gl context stuff in qemu uh but we'll get there eventually we'll get there eventually so pixels here is returns the texture image. Should be pointed to array of the type specified by type. Uh, okay, yeah, so it doesn't seem like we should just be able to do this. 
Oh, you started using... Oh, uh, oh, I see. You were probably here in happy hour. Uh, we did a topic switch. Topic switch. So we kind of do, like, multiple things at once around here. Uh, we have, like, the happy hour segment where we kind of do, like, stuff that's, like, uh, maybe, like, background info, supplemental information type shit. Uh, so this... Today when we were working on playing with OpenGL 1.1. But then at around 2 o'clock we switched to, like, a YouTube video style thing where we kind of, we try to try to tackle like one concept end to end and we try to focus up a little bit and so we're now working on trying to integrate a OpenGL context in QEMU uh just like draw anything to the QEMU screen with OpenGL and we are really struggling with that really struggling with that but we'll get there uh okay and uh, so the format here and type, let's move carefully here. Format is RGBA, type is GL unsigned. Byte. And now we need a pixel buffer to write to. So we are expecting kind of like, I guess if it's RGBA, we're expecting uh, four bytes times 1024 times 768. Uh, UN32T star uh, pixels equals mal like this and then we can write out two pixels okay so now can we see we, we are expecting to see a bunch of red pixels here so can we um for pixel for for int i equals zero i is less than four times ten to the four times seven sixty eight plus plus i uh can we print out pixels i as hex So if we are lucky, we should see a consistent uh, FF00000 or 00000FF. I'm not sure which endianness it is, but we're expecting to see like basically like one consistent column because we tried to clear it with red. And if that is true, then that means that we at least we at least understand that we are writing to some frame buffer somewhere, and the issue is more on how we are supposed to display that texture in the window. Which would be my guess, anyways, but I would like... It's good to confirm sometimes. It's good to confirm sometimes. Root. Test app. Dev DRI card 1. Okay, so that's really good, right? There are some zeros kind of trailing around at the end there. Oh, because uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, the 4 should not be in this loop down here. Uh, because we are iterating by chunks of four in the for loop. Oopsies! Which explains why there were zeros and a seg fault. Kind of hits a double whammy there. But it looked to me, it looked to me like we were seeing the right thing there. Right? We were seeing a column of FFs and then a bunch of columns of zeros. I guess maybe we should be seeing alpha channel as well as at, at FF. Uh, but, you know, that does look kind of right. And so we can also confirm here. Let's try to set another one. So let's see if, like, this This is actually very interesting. This is actually extremely interesting. So either this might be the problem. This could be the problem, actually. Uh, or if, if the, if this is a zero, 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 maybe we are showing the correct image and it's just black anyways. Right, that would be interesting here. So if we turn on another one here, I'm kind of expecting to see, you know, another another FF show up in the middle somewhere. So we're expecting to see. And if we aren't, then that's a really good clue. Very good clue. Run. Run, run, run. Root. Test app dev DRI card one. We are not. Okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. That's a really good clue. Um, really good clue. So what the fuck is going on then? Uh, fuck. Wait, what just happened? Oh, are we back? Did I F? I feel like we're good now. Okay, 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 okay. So, 
Now I'm suspect of this thing. So can we go back to turning this on? Can we go back to kind of just like R RGBA on kind of both sides here? Disconnecting for less than one second. Okay, go, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So the frame buffer is changing. And I just want to like quadruple check this. I know we've looked at this same piece of code like eight times, but I just really, really, really want to be confident that it is using that texture that we pass in. Where he is binding that texture with false. So delete is false. And this is just getting bound here. Now we could be, he is attaching it as color attachment zero X, which is maybe a little bit surprising. Um, but I'm pretty sure that this is the right thing. So the attachment, he's attaching his color. Yeah. Do we have to do anything to like allocate this thing as a color buffer? No, no I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that this is fine. <laughs> pretty sure, pretty sure. Guys, I'm going to fucking lose my mind if this is it again. I'm going to fucking lose my mind. We've already done this. We've already fucking done this shit where we forgot to set the viewport and we wasted like an hour on it. And I'm going to be so mad if we did it again. I'm going to be so mad. Uh, okay, serial. Root. D uh, test app, dev, DRI card, one. Okay. I guess, I don't know if I'm happy or sad that that wasn't it. Because we are still not seeing the thing that we applied. This is pretty surprising. This is actually extremely surprising to me. Can we cut out like their stuff? There's something very, very surprising about this whole thing to me. Where I would have thought for sure that this was doing what we expected. Shouldn't it be, shouldn't be ABGR since you got FF0000? I think that probably what I'm seeing is just only the alphabet set. I think that nothing else is happening. Um, yeah, XY with height, yeah, okay. Uh, GL clear color not clearing. Let's just see if that has like any... Uh, oh, yeah, geo clear and geo clear with geo buffer blit. I guess it is possible, like, a geo flush here might do something. I would expect not. I would expect not. But. Oh, also, that guy, that was, like, code from some idiot, like, some, some guy who's, like, I don't know what's happening. So I really wouldn't expect that to do anything, actually. That's, like, fucking stupid. But we've already typed it, so. You can query the currently bound frame buffer for the current color attachment. Maybe do that and check if it's really our texture. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. For sure. I'm assuming if that flush does something, yeah, of course it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. Why would it? Okay. So I like that idea. So can you like, uh, um, does jail clear go into the texture? It's supposed to go into the currently bound frame buffer, which our call to, um, GL just scan out texture is supposed to be rebinding our texture to the to a current frame buffer that is bound right now. So GeoClear should be writing to that texture if I understood correctly, right? And so I like the idea of checking the the frame buffer binding. Um, open GL check frame buffer attachment. Can we see? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. this button not going on. Uh, check. OpenGL frame buffer query. Like, <laughs> uh, 
Thank you. I think it's this, he says. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So here we want to type out like uh he's got target. Specifies the target to which frame buffer is bound. So does it tell me what my like options for target are? I want draw frame buffer. Oh, I guess maybe we've only bound it. Oh, it's, oh yeah, it should be fine. Should be fine. So the draw frame buffer is the target. The frame buffer specifies the name of the frame buffer object for this. We don't have name because we're just using the currently bound one, right? Or frame buffer. Yeah, we it's fine. We already have. We're just using the defaultly bound one. Specifies the attachment of the frame buffer object to query. So attachment is going to be the color attachment, I assume. Uh, Jesus. Stencil, depth, or color. Yeah, color. All right. Then we have P name. What is P name? Specifies the parameter of the attachment to query. Uh, P name. Uh, then params will contain one of, if upon successful return, if P name is this, then params will return one of none, frame buffer default, GL texture, or GL render buffer. Identifying the type of object. If the value is GL none, then either no frame buffer is about. Uh... Params will contain. Can I not just get like the fucking texture ID back? Object name will retain the texture object which contains the attached image. Level, texture layer. Uh, yeah, I think I want this, right? I think. I think. And then we'll say, uh, our texture and bound texture texture and bound texture id pretty sure this is right but we'll see either it's right and if it i guess we have a true test case of it's correct and does what we want then we'll see something that's reasonable we will see those two numbers match but if it, if we either typed the wrong thing there, or um, it doesn't do what we expect, we'll see something else. So let's kind of see what we get here. Fuck. I forgot about this. Uh, FBO. Okay, can we uh, disable that, like, fucking spam print then? Just temporarily. Run, 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 run. All right, dude, 4.30, fuck. I'm gonna be so mad if we accomplish nothing today. I understand that it's hard, but like, fuck, man. Okay, so that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So the, the our texture really is bound to the current frame buffer. And the current frame, the frame buffer has changed. Two really good signs for us. Uh, in which case, why, when we read the image back, is it a problem? Maybe the texture level here is wrong. Uh, yeah, it's actually really interesting. Really interesting. Very, very surprising. Yeah. Okay. Uh, GL get text image black. Right. Let's start. Let's see if we've done something fucking stupid here. 
Oh, uh, okay. So if you do something stupid, they might just give you something stupid. I guess is kind of what that indicates. Um. Okay, so we are asking for RGBA with unsigned byte. Oof, I think you're not allowed to have a texture both attached to an FBO and bound to a texture unit at the same time. Uh, so do I have to bind the texture again here? Uh, GL bind texture FBO. Like, read, read data from FBO texture. <laughs> Uh, to CPU, right? You're kind of, you're kind of indicating that like it undoes itself. Can I like I I'm, I guess like that kind of makes me think I could do something like this. Maybe, maybe. And can we not print like all of them? Can we just print like? You know, like maybe like uh, 50 of these. Uh, you're saying unbind it before going into QEMU and then bind it again after. That would make sense if what you're saying is true. Kind of like here. So we like kind of say, hey, this is not a texture that we're actively using. Then we like draw this to it and then we're like, okay, can we use it again? And then we like look at it. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully that gives us something interesting. Alright, 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 alright. Card one. Oh, here we go, baby. That's really good. We're still seeing a black screen, but now the texture... The texture now contains the bits that we're setting here, right? That's really good. They're backwards, right? Because it's like Little Indian. But we're seeing... Uh, three sets of apps now. So that's that's a really good sign. Really good sign. Let's try... Okay, I still am suspect of this DF, this GFX update full. I'm like very, very, very suspect of that thing. It doesn't really seem like the right thing. So now that we have a texture that has data that we think is valid in it, let's try not calling that again. You can also query the, tech, the frame buffer for instance. Yeah, I was considering that. I forgot that... Uh, I did forget about that until very, very recently. Should be good though since joke really worked. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm assuming as well. Um, thank you so much for that piece of information. I don't know how long it would have taken me to find that. Okay, so this is back to the fucked state. So we kind of had multiple problems here, for sure. Um, so now it's really not clear to me where to go next. Because again, this this GFX update just does not sound like the right thing because this function pulls data from the Pixman stuff. So it's like, why? Again, but again, we saw that everyone else calls it, which is very strange. Very strange. And we're clearly seeing that calling dpy goal update is doing something unexpected. Right? If we do neither of these things, what happens? I think it's the goal update call that is causing the, like, screen corruption. But we should double check. We should double check. Test app dev DRI card one. We wait for him to print some stuff. Oh no, it is actually not even the gel update thing. Interesting. That's actually really surprising to me. Super surprising to me. Um That means it's the scan out texture. 
Oh, right, right, right. Never mind, never mind. That makes sense. I, I'm confu I was confused. This is where we're actually changing the backing buffer to a texture. So it kind of makes sense that this is causing problems. It does make sense that that's causing problems. Ugh, there's just a piece of me that's so lost here, man. Because shouldn't he check? Like... Who's using this kind thing again? It's kind of this thing. Display, change listener, display console. Which says what? This is probably called when we click the button to jump into this section. And he just calls scan out texture. Who maybe, maybe is having trouble setting the OpenGL context. I guess if we made the context from the wrong from the wrong thread maybe jail bind texture is zero when you're done. I think I left it at zero. I think. I did it I thought that I did that, right? Because I had the uh jail bind texture. Yeah, I commented out the rebind. So it's left at zero here onwards. I guess maybe this thing internally called GL bind texture. I don't think he did though. I don't think he did. He called. Uh, where did he use the backing ID here? Yeah, so he didn't ever bind the texture. So I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine. I I wonder if this display callback is like on a different thread. In which case, can we check that somehow? Uh, can we like a uh, Linux thread ID or something? Uh, get TID. Print F. Uh, we'll say that the. Uh. Drawing on thread this. And then can we do uh, the display console thing? Right, whoever uses a uh, scan out texture. Uh, we'll say uh, call back on thread this. Maybe that'll give us some clue. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Root. Test app dev DRI card one. Reporting for duty. So. Drawing on thread 228 this thing. And then I go over here. And that callback's never called? Okay, wait, that's a really good clue, actually. That's a pretty good clue, because I would have thought that this is where we end up. Definitely would have thought that's where we end up. Uh, so... Why? Okay, register display change listener is called by EGL headless. Oh, I see. So here, huh? This feels like it's backwards to me. A little bit. I could be wrong about where this is coming from. EGL headless init. So on on initialization, they say, hey, I want to use these callbacks. So...
where does it get assigned to anything? Right, like here, when you call update, he calls DCL for each listener. where he inserts this on register. Oh, I see, sorry. So he calls this here and then for each update, he calls like DPI graphics update as an example. Okay. Right, okay, so this is the same thing, right? So they, they end up in here. Again, all of this makes sense. So we are not DMA buff, right? So this doesn't happen. And we just go straight to scan out flush. I guess we don't really know that we're in EGL, but he should just be fucking FB blitting this bad boy. I guess we should discover um, which GFX path we're on. We know that we're in GTK. We know we're in GTK. So we should be able to, at the very least, log um, in both output paths on update GL. Let's do that. Let's do that. So we'll, we'll print F here. I guess we don't even need to print F. We can just, uh, breakpoint. We can just breakpoint. Uh, so let's do that. Nam, nam vim run, and we'll run under GB. GB not found. Cool. Love to see that. I didn't want to fucking use a debugger anyways. Who needs it, you know? You know? Okay, breakpoint here. And then what's our other option? Our other option is this. Okay, run. And can we just like fucking hit this guy? No. I guess we have to run our app. Okay. So we are in this version, which is not quite the same. We were kind of making the assumption that all the APIs would behave the same way, but this is a different function. So uh, that's a little interesting. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard now to get into this stuff. Uh, especially because we can't really access the same texture anymore. Wait, hold on. Oh yeah, sorry. Guest FB DMA buff. So this is still just like an EGLFB, but like this texture is not. Can we like look at guest fb dot texture 507 is that our texture 584 507 sorry 507 so that's good that means that like this is correctly like identified as the texture we want to be rendering from um okay So, I guess why the fuck is this not working then? You know, you know, because we now think that the texture is fine. I guess maybe. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Who calls this jail update? So, like, this is an example here. He calls handle display. Yeah, maybe a jail update is not the place. Maybe it's not.
Um. Replace surface else update. Yeah, I'm just not seeing it. There's something missing here still. Which is so annoying, man. So annoying. Hmm. What could you be culture? I mean, I will. I yeah. I mean, I know where I'm calling from. That's fine. I'm not really too worried about that. I'm not too worried about that. I guess we could try to investigate another GPU. Um, so we're on the same thread. We're on the same thread. Our texture is correctly getting bound into the like subsystem. The warning that we're getting is like pretty damning in some way. Right when we, uh, oh, sorry. I guess in the case where we don't call GFX update full, the fact that it's struggling to make context current is quite concerning, I guess. I guess. Um, but I don't really have a good idea of where to look now. You know? Right, like... Yeah, this is very strange. Very strange. Can we force, like, it to use the EGL backend? How is it picking? Because I feel like I understand the EGL code better. The, the dependency loop, like, the dependencies are, like, tree is a little smaller. So I wonder if we can force that. Uh, by looking at... Oh, God. Wherever the fuck this is. Uh, so like, right? Can we look at GPI GPI go update? Uh, this is config x eleven is one option here, which goes into the path that we want. Right? What is this other case? Uh, config x11. So where does this if def end? Oh, pretty quick after. Uh, okay. So these are both under display change listener ops. They're both GTK EGL. But this one just makes way more sense to me. Uh, okay, so there's GL area ops. Oh, I see. Oh. So how, okay, I don't, what, what's the other option? Uh, here. So this is on gfx in it so we have area ops here if gtk use gl area can we turn this off uh is it never set to false or just relying on the like Oh wait, this is I see. It's it's like an extern there. Okay, can we just turn this off? If has gel and gel is not equal off, then if this stuff is true, use gel area equals true. 
What if we just don't? <laughs> you know? You know? Just, just temporarily. Uh, okay. He really doesn't like that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Fine. Uh. Fuck. Fuck. Okay. Uh, that's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying, it's annoying, annoying. What? I guess we don't have a choice here. Uh, god damn it. God damn it. I guess... This is only if Wayland display? So I wonder if we can get away with doing a, uh, something like, uh, and grip, wait, I guess maybe instead of doing, we could just write false here. Cause then it should fall into the other path. Uh, that seems reasonable to me. Uh, run, 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 run. XCP connection error. Uh, probably because this is using this is being used in other places. Probably. Uh, so probably instead we have to do like M grep Wayland. And can we do like unset uh, uh, env dash u way land display? Turn that shit off. Maybe, maybe. Okay, I don't really know what I'm expecting to see here. I guess I'm trying to, I'm hoping that uh, we have the other set of callbacks now that I can understand better. Uh, I lost it though. So console, let's see. Register display change listener. Right, kind of this stuff. We are kind of hoping that we are in this version of the function. Not the other one. With the way that I have set my environment variables up. Okay, we are in. Fuck, still jail area. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> I was really hoping that we could get ourselves out of this. So how do we like disable Wayland? Like, disable, uh, QEMU, is it like an option? Uh, like, can I like turn that shit off? Nope. Uh, just say force, force X Wayland. Is that a thing we can do? Force apps under, under X Wayland? I've searched them before. Uh, I think we did that already. Did I type it wrong? Wayland display. Oi, 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 man. Where was that checking in? It was like, is Wayland display here? Which comes from here. Um. I mean, we could just fucking hard compile this shit out. 
but it's kind of like deep in GDK. Fuck! Oh, it's so annoying. What was the path here again? It was like if we have display open G uh, use area. This gets set here. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty fucking hard to dodge. Pretty hard to dodge. Oh, I just wish I just want to get into the functions I understand without having to go through a bunch of like GDK shit. I just feel like it'd be easier. You know? You know? I'm going to lose it. I probably do have to, I probably should, like, force myself to break at some point, but. So we turn this to false, intentionally. Can we just double check? Uh... Um, This is probably, uh, int is wayland, do this, and uh, printf is wayland is a boolean. And please, God, just let me turn this shit off. Like, did I just misunderstand this? Run. Did I see? Is Wayland 1? So, yeah. Can we do, like, a GDK disable Wayland? Uh, GDK. Like, is there really, is that the only thing? Yeah, Wayland display. XCG session type, maybe, as well? Is Wayland 1? Uh, GTK force X Wayland. Um... So software has proper fallback on setting Wayland display should work, but that didn't seem to do it for us. I guess maybe like M dash U is different than typing Wayland display equals. So we could try this. Oh, is Wayland zero? Wait, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Thank God, dude. So now we can go into the other set of callbacks that I feel like I understood a little bit better. And let's see if that behaves differently. Fuck, dude. I mean, that's working, I think, right? I think that's just working. Uh, I think. Let's make sure that we get the color right. Right, let's just set it to red. We're going to set it to full red, and if it's red, then um, I guess that there's some sort of, like, constraint that we're missing that is not hooked up, like, that we don't need to do in the, some version, but we do in others. Right? Like, if we have... Okay. Um... You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, they have, like, different backends for these sets of functions, and it turns out that we were kind of using one as a reference for how it's supposed to work. Um, and we understood it correctly. Maybe. Oh, my fucking god. Yeah. So we understood what we were reading correctly. It's just what we were reading did not correctly fulfill all the requirements, right? So I think that we made the correct decisions based off of that one display driver. Now, what is really unclear now is um, how we are supposed to deal with this, right? So we must, we're missing something, right? Now, the idea here that we are allowed to bind a texture, use this context, and call deal update, like, I was so sure reading the code, I was so fucking sure that that was right. And, and I guess in some, by some metric it is, right? And this is the type of thing where, like, interface docs would be really fucking sick, right? Where, like, I could go to the header of this thing and it would tell me, like, hey, you have to call GL update and this other thing, right? We're missing, we're missing a piece here, but at the fucking least, 
we got we got it working. We got it working. Now the trick here is that the we could maybe try to derive some like understanding based off the fact that like the other things were area related maybe the error coming from gdk failing to make context current is also extremely suspect extremely suspect right so there's also maybe something there about like context creation having to go through like some path right we 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 created our context directly here which i think actually is not the same as what other people did Right, we didn't really look at, like, this path here. Uh, yeah, they called this on init. So I wonder, I wonder if, like, the... Th oh, no, we checked the threads, though. We did check threads, so I don't really think that that would be it. I don't know. I don't know. But I, uh, you know, I think that we have fucking fought with uh, software enough for today. We spent three hours drawing a red box... Um, and we don't even know if we're, we don't even think we're doing it right. <laughs> but I think, I hope, I hope, I don't know if this is true, but I hope that this is valuable in some way, right? Like a part, a piece of me is like extremely frustrated that like, I, I want, I want to like write things quickly and show progress, right? But like, it doesn't always go like that. And I hope it's valuable to just see me fight with it for hours like I, I think that like at no point in here were we like full stuck which is is good right we always had another another rope to pull on to kind of figure stuff out and eventually like you pull enough ropes and you find something um so i hope that's that's interesting to watch um but it can still be frustrating at the same time <laughs> uh so Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, we stream most days at around 2 o'clock, or sorry, 12.30 Pacific time to 4 o'clock Pacific time. It is 5 o'clock Pacific time now, so we've gone an hour over. Um, and if you're watching live, uh, you can expect to come back at other days at 12.30 to 4, an hour ago to three and a half hours ago, four and a half hours ago, I don't know, four and a half hours ago, uh, and see me live. If you are... Uh, watching live and you want to catch VODs, there's a YouTube link in the short description where you can swing by and check out previous projects. We're working on demystifying the latest graphics stack, but there's a lot of other stuff in here too if you want to check that out. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a short link in the YouTube description. C come by, say hi if you want to chat live. There's a Discord link in the Twitch description if you want to chat about stuff while we're offline. And a GitHub link in the Twitch description where code for this will eventually end up under GPU testing environment. Um, I think... That is all we got. To I guess we usually say like, like, and subscribe, like fucking Twitch streamer, YouTubers, uh, use your Twitch primes if you got them. Um, and, uh, if you want to see, right. So if you're on YouTube, um, you're probably seeing the two to five segment. There's also a 1230 to two segment, um, that gets archived as happy hour, um, paywalled on Patreon or YouTube. If you want to see kind of like supplemental material for like, we're doing some reading, investigating stuff that isn't really worth its own video, um, if you want to see that type of stuff, it's on there. Today we were looking at, um, using OpenGL 1.1 to try to see if it would be a better fit for a fixed GPU pipeline. Um, so that's the type of stuff you can see on there. Uh, so check that out if you want. Otherwise, uh, goodbye, and I will see you guys another time. YouTube, later, and Twitch is fun to raid.